Hi hey everyone, Bernard here and I hope you're all staying safe and well welcome to my latest citizen channel feature. Uh, please if you are new to the channel push that subscribe button and push the bell notifications as well so you know when these vlogs are coming out and uh, of course I do lots of stuff city past and city present so uh, please push that uh, notification button. Make sure your notification is set to public as well don't forget although otherwise you won't get to know but uh, press that subscribe button. Please check out my links on screen as well for uh, Facebook and Twitter and also don't forget I've got a little film and TV channel on YouTube as well so if you want to have a little break from football check that out and of course uh, on Facebook and Twitch I will check every few days and follow and friend everyone back on there and also don't forget I have a, I have a sort of links with losing business on Twitter they promote uh, city fan related small businesses local businesses which need our help perhaps more than ever these days don't they so please don't hesitate to get in touch with me if I can promote or put some stuff out for you in on one of my uh, magazine vlogs my city magazine vlogs and don't forget I'll always give a shout out to local local projects or charities etc etc just get in touch anyway please enjoy today's today's citizen channel feature thank you right today our feature is called dream debuts yeah we're going to have a look at uh, city players who've made a, a big impact on the debuts for the club uh, and this episode, we're going to look at uh, a talent which you, which who or he or uh, sadly didn't, didn't sort of had a talent that didn't really get fulfilled. Certainly not City anyway. We saw glimpses of it or other teams he went on to play for, of course, but uh, we didn't quite get to share it at, uh, at uh, Manchester City. So, uh, and the thing is, uh, we're going to look at a gentleman called Stan Bowles today, and not, not just one debut, but he made two dream debuts. Hey, there you go, very greedy. In the space of just four days for our club, uh, Mr. Stan Bowles. Yeah, was born on Christmas Eve, uh, 1948, in Collyhurst, Manchester. There you go, Man a Manchester lad. Uh, he signs as apprentice for City at uh, 17. Of course, City were then under... Uh, the new the new leadership of uh, Joe Mercer with his assistant Malcolm Allison, uh, Stan Bowles' dad was a big City fan, so obviously was quite delighted by by this uh, occurrence of him signing a French. And that's what they wanted to do. The kids, you know, obviously United or City, that was that was the main aim to get an apprenticeship and hopefully go on to something a little bit better. And of course, when he joined City, he was put under the let's say protective wing, but probably not protective from the uh, big. Big uh, Scott Dave Ewing, of course, very very strict, very very by the book, uh, by the book uh, sort of trade. He was the reserve team coach, but obviously he was the one who sort of had day to day uh, knowledge of the apprentices, etc. Not not certainly not Joe Mercer and Malcolm Allison. He was taken on uh, for an eighteen month contract at just uh, twenty pound a week at seventeen. So that's not bad, is it? Seven seventeen years old, twenty pound a week. I think. I think so what was I? I was at sixteen in nineteen seventy five. I was on twenty four pound twenty three a week gross. So I mean before tax. So uh, yeah, that so wasn't wasn't too bad was it? for nineteen sixty seven. That's uh, twenty quid a week. Uh, at the time, at the time, you don't have all this sort of sitting on the bench and being loaned out. I mean, sometimes you sort of chance came up quite unexpectedly. And at the time, it was no different with Stan Bowles. He was thrown in at the deep end. He played for the A team, of course, gone through that. Then he progressed to the reserves. Uh, Played, played in some good games there. He commented, I think, in his book, we're going to have a look at in a minute, his autobiography, that, uh, you know, a game against United Reserves, you could have like, up to 20,000 people watching. So quite, quite impressive. Uh, but his first team debut, well, sort of just come out of the blue as I said there's no slow preparation it's just sort of happened and uh, he does talk about how it came came about in, in his autobiography and it was a 67-68 season of course which would turn into a, a quite a significant season uh, in City's history so I'm just going to quote from his uh, autobiography now and he, take, he takes up the story on the Wednesday evening uh, one Wednesday evening, I arrived at the ground, intending to join the reserve squad, and was called into the first team coach Malcolm Allison's office. 
I'm a bit concerned about Tony Coleman's injury, said Malcolm, without looking at me, so I'm going to put you on the bench. Yeah, no eye contact. Uh, he looked up, I might give you half a game. So there it was. I trotted off a teenage sensation in the making if I didn't fall flat on my ass. Uh, I made my debut for Manchester City in the League Cup against Leicester City on the 13th of September 1967. Leicester had a long history of introducing young players into the side, almost slipping them in unnoticed, as did Manchester United. Both clubs had a a gold mine of talent in their youth teams. United manager Matt Busby was renowned for pitching unknown youngsters into the cauldron of the first division, much to the dismay of the Manchester City faithful. This time the tables were turned. It was me who was thrown into the lion's den in front of more than 30,000 supporters. Well, it was 25,000, I think. I'll tell you that in a minute. Uh, I had no time to feel nervous. One minute I was just someone sitting on the subs bench. The next I was pitched into battle. Our inside left, Neil Young, couldn't continue because of a heavy cold and on I went in a complete daze. The players around me were helping by saying, don't worry, take it easy, we'll look after you. They did and we thrashed Leicester 4-0. Incredibly, at the end of the game, my teammates as well as fans gave me a standing ovation. We certainly did. It was a supreme accolade, a dream come true. I'd produced the kind of fairy tale performance that all youngsters fantasise about. But I couldn't take it all in, everything was a blur. Next day, one newspaper reported that in 45 minutes, Bowles scored twice, nearly scored again with a superb header and strutted off with a confident stride of a youngster who knew he could do it all the time. Some people said it was the most stunning main role debut in years, but the management were very careful not to get too carried away with the euphoria. Joe Malcolm told everyone that I was still very much in the grooming process, still standing on the bottom rung of the ladder, but looking very much a player to watch out for in the future. Harry Goodwin, the club scout, was all suddenly good, uh, Godwin's and Goodwin or Godwin? 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 Yep. Uh, the club scout was uh, s suddenly in the spotlight for signing me as a schoolboy. He told people that all he did to coax me to join City was give me a packet of mints. Of course you did. Some of the papers there were also careful to keep everything in perspective. One said these are very early days in his career and he must be given time to develop, time to grasp the essentials of the game, which cannot be accumulated overnight. Don't look for miracles from young Stan. He is nothing more than a youngster who possesses fine ability. And then we'll go back to that in just a moment. Yeah, so there you go. Uh, a crowd of 25,653, plus uh, including my pop, my dad and me in the in the Platte Lane stand, uh, saw this young mophead Manchester lad come onto the pitch to replace a legend. Yeah, uh, Neil Young had scored a goal in the game uh, already, uh, but obviously Ill, he wasn't feeling too good. Uh, and came off the pitch and uh, Mr Stan Bowles scored the next two in the game and a comfortable 4-0 win was finished by a Mr Tony Buck goal as well so there you go he got the other one but there wasn't too much time for uh, the said he, it was all a blur for this youngster to dwell on this and uh, and obviously he carries on the story uh, Joe Mercer then told me there was every chance that I would uh, my, make my league debut against Sheffield United the following Saturday Tony Coleman was not was 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 out with an ankle injury and suddenly i was being considered as a first team player ironically i was packed i was picked as a left winger the position that i filled for manchester boys until now city had felt that i was too small for this position and were planning to turn me into a wing half the team was going well we were attempting to win our sixth successive game i was going to be part of it again the impossible happened i scored two goals making it four goals in 135 minutes of, of First team football. It seemed I'd already won the hearts of the City fans. Well, that's probably probably true at that stage. Yeah, four goals in, in less, well, less than two games, wasn't it? So uh, there you go. You'd won us, certainly won us over, that's for sure. I'm sure that's, that's a bigger crowd that day, obviously, for the league game. 31,922 fans were there that day uh, to celebrate. Yeah, we had a new hero, didn't we? Absolutely fantastic. A young lad, I probably went in school and were in the schoolyard playing football all of a sudden. I was probably Stan Bowles scored, trying to score the goals when we were kicking that sock about, the sock, that rolled-up sock with lots of different old socks together. We weren't allowed to play with balls because some dinner lady had actually stood on one and and, uh, and uh, injured herself so we were banned to playing with rolled up socks uh, instead of footballs but uh, there you go we all of a sudden we're becoming, becoming stambles on the park and in, in, our, in the playground yard
Uh, the other goals that get that day for, against Sheffield United were by the lesser known, the lesser known Bell, Lee and Summerby. So there, there you go. Uh, not bad little company, was it? He didn't feature in the next league game at, at uh, Highbury as uh, Tony Coleman had come back from injury. But uh, he did take Paul Hintz's spot, his number seven spot of Paul Hintz for the Main Road Derby on the 30th of sem- September 1967. Sadly, a, a 2-1 loss for City. So it was perhaps a magic, perhaps a magic of Stamford balls is waning already I think Colin Bell scored our goal against United that day so sadly no no uh, no goals and a hint of trouble to, and possibly a hint of the trouble to come as well with Stan Bowles as he was lucky to stay on the pitch after a fight with with another I think Collier's Manchester lad a gentleman in in a red top uh, called Brian Kidd so yeah he very lucky to stay on the park uh, I think Tony Buck intervened with the referee and they, they did get away with it because of the their age I think uh, Stan Bowles was willing to apologise the following day because uh, he was offered money by a newspaper to have a, a picture taken with Brian Kidd uh, shaking hands in front of an image of him fighting on the pitch in the background but there you go that, that that's the media for you even even in the sixties. So there you go. Um, so strangely enough, this is sort of, this sort of thing didn't sit well with Mister Mercer. He did he did like players fighting, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And obviously, um, he didn't sort of get on that too well with Alice and I. We had trouble with Alice, and so but he did manage to play the next game. Strangely enough, so even though I say he even been in this fracas fracas with uh, Brian Kidd, he was picked to play away at Sunderland. Uh, but uh, that was it then. Sadly, we're not to see much uh, from then on, to be honest with you. His, his appearance was very intermittent. I think he didn't he sort of played the odd game until season 69 70, where he managed to get a few more in. And of course, our hero, our, our initial hero after two games, began to fade just a little bit. Perhaps there wasn't stand balls on the park or in the, in the schoolyard. Uh, uh, too often over the next couple of years, I'd, I'd gone to high school then. I don't, I don't ever remember uh, singing the praises of Sam Bowles at Parswood High School. That's that's for sure. He'd only managed a total of 16 appearances uh, for a substitute before moving on to Berry briefly in 1970. His goal tally would remain for City at four. Uh, so that was it, the first two games. Uh, those two debut games and his two goals, debut in the League Cup and debut in the League. Uh, but at least I was there to see them, so that's, that's uh, one claim to fame. At least I was there to see all Stan Bowles' goals, which is not bad going, is it? I mean, let's face it, he never really had the temperament or personality to get on with Alison, I don't think. We mentioned that before, didn't we? I think obviously Alison was a big a big figure, wasn't he? Let's face it. And uh, the City's policy of only bringing, as mentioned there by Stan, about obviously these other clubs are willing to bring put some youngsters in. But City sort of always stayed with the tried and trusted Joe Mercer, Malcolm Alison. And, uh, well, obviously Malcolm Allison totally changed, didn't he? But at that stage in uh, uh, Manchester City, uh, obviously people like Tony Coleman, obviously they were fit, they played, it was simple as that. So youngsters didn't really get the chance, perhaps he got other clubs. So, yeah, so that probably didn't it didn't do well for Stan Bowles, as you can see, because he hardly ever played, because well, obviously we we kept our players quite quite fit and reasonably fit for the uh, two or three years that Stan Bowles was there. So obviously with an ego like Allison's, with an ego like Stan Bowles, which you know obviously it was never going to sit right, was it? It was never going to never going to end uh, end well, was it? As far as Stan Bowles and Malcolm Allison and Manchester City uh, was got was going to play out. But in the history of City and player debuts, I think these two debuts, uh, which they were, let's be honest about it, it was two debuts, one one in a, a, a non-league game in a, in a League Cup and one in a league itself. These two debuts by Stan Bowles props will be remembered, certainly uh, remembered by me for a while anyway and remembered for a long time by the, by the fans and all of us that were there to witness them. But such a shame they weren't built upon. But uh, very interesting times, of course, and... Uh, very interesting to see that. Of course, he didn't get his league title winner's medal. He didn't play enough games for that either. So quite sad, really. But at least he did. We say we're not talking about the rest of his career now. But at least he did go on. All right, he's got a bit of trouble, didn't he? he got a trip into trouble every now and then. But uh, at least he went on and had a, a pretty good career. I'm sure we'll touch upon this. Uh, autobiography of Stan Bowles in future uh, book club uh, features as well but uh, thanks for joining me for this uh, little special this uh, little special on dream debuts for Manchester City which uh, featured the wonderful talented uh, Mr Stan Bowles
Anyway, thanks for watching. What are we going to do the rest of the day? Have a great one. Look after yourselves, look after your friends, look after your families. More importantly, let's all look after each other till we meet here again on the Citizen Channel. Or perhaps have a flit across. If you want to have a rest from football, have a look at my film and TV channel. Uh, I only ask one small thing of you, please. Stay safe, Blues. Come on, City. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.